Assalamu alaikum students. How are you? Well, I'm fine. Thank you. Last time, uh, we were talking about uh, how this mass communication came into being and uh, various areas where mass communication is uh, helping the mankind and uh, how the growth of actually mass communication has taken place over the centuries and uh, wh where it is helping the people. We were talking about uh, uh, the times when nothing was available to people to write on. Just to recap for the students who missed uh, the first sitting, just a few lines. There was nothing to write on, even when the people had some idea of uh, a language in the form of uh, symbols, signs, not like this, like our today is our own we are so much familiar with language, it's not like that, not that, uh, I mean, no, no way of uh, having that uh, advanced languages, but whatever they could uh, uh, invent or uh, do to, to communicate to other people what it stand, what this sign stand for, what this line stand for, or what this symbol means, whatever they have, they didn't have something to write on. This continued for many centuries. Then there came a time when the people were able to have something, I would not say paper, but something like paper, where they could write all these things. Once this was done, the problem of carrying message from one place to another place. You see, this time I'm not saying from one point to another point, as we say in the definition of communication, it is sending of a message from the source to the receiver. Well, you see, in this way, when they had uh, this something where they could write on something, it was easy. You see, when they were writing on the stones or the huge blocks, it was very difficult to move those stones from one place to another place because uh, those days the facilities of transportation you can very well imagine were not available. So, so it was almost, there was no question of uh, moving uh, something, some object where you have written something to move from one place to another place. People had been stri striving, I mean the scholars, the scientists of those times, they had been striking their head to find something lighter, convenient, where they could uh, write something and take from one place to another. So a, a paper-like material was available. Uh, after the Stone Age, I mean Stone Age in the sense of communication, I mean when, when, when writing on stones was over those times, wherever they could find some substance to write on, the beginning writing on those. So, you see what happened? It took the message to some distance. First, they were able to have a message told or delivered to a very, very limited people in a tribe, in a small family, in a very small civilization, if you can call it a civilization. It was like that. But when once they had this substance where they could write on, they were in a position to carry their message to some greater distance, to the next village or uh, something across uh, uh, the place where people were living. That helped the people. But you see again, there is no historic record available. When did it happen? As we were talking in the, in the last uh, sitting, the recorded history is only for a few thousand years. Beyond the six or seven thousand years, it's very difficult for, uh, for we people to find out, particularly in areas like communication, what it was, because no book or no write-up is available from the uh, few uh, civilizations, the ruins of which have been uh, uh, excavated in this century, in the, in the previous century, 
this suggests that the people were familiar to communicate to each other with the help of those signs and symbols in lines and words say but there is no sign available how uh, they were able to to travel or to take the message from one place to another place in fact it was only possible when they could find something to write on and here today students we would uh, see how uh, this uh, from this early communication how uh, people have moved towards uh, uh, the printing uh, printing part of uh, this communication because we are talking about the mass communication you see writing on uh, when it started writing on paper the substance like paper what the people would be doing a little advanced form of communication we are now talking once you have you are able to write it down on something we have traces in our history that uh, people would send uh, a form of letter i would not say the letter we are familiar with uh, writing letters uh, people would write something and send it to some distant place when uh, there were states mini states in uh, something like 7 uh, 8 years ago 7 8000 years ago there were many states uh, the rulers particularly it was from the court who required some order uh, to be delivered to the people they had uh, no means of communication so what would they do something would be written on the paper or the paper like substance as we have been saying again and again uh, so that um, you should be very clear that it was not like the papers uh, we are working on these days on some 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 substance where they would write and they would send a person uh, outside the court who would tell the people what uh, the message is we can't say uh, it was a mass communication but we can say with uh, some certainty it was beginning of uh, mass communication because now you were able to talk to a higher number of people as compared to your previous practice of communication where you were confined to only people who can uh, see you who can listen to your voice you were confined to only that area but once there was writing and you can take the writing away you were in a position people were in a position to take the message to a little higher number of people well that in that establishes an area where we can say it was a step towards mass communication well once this paper was available students i mean it's very interesting uh, in our history in the history of uh, communication uh, once this writing paper was available the question was uh, you should have something which helps you write uh, more fluently and uh, with more convenience because you were confined to writing those uh, very initial uh, level of language what happened in the well say in the start of the middle ages something like uh, you may say uh, 2000 years ago somewhere people started printing uh not exactly printing but uh, they were able to employ people who should be writing uh say copies of one script that also helped it was uh, something new uh, you are not writing one letter you are in fact writing one letter but you are you are employed people who are writing copies of those letters there were religious matters uh, which in fact uh, came in this practice of communication 
the religious instructions. In those time, it was uh, the, the church, uh, the Christianity. Uh, it it is before Islam. Uh, this era is before Islam. So it was a church where this was done. People were employed. The clerics were employed there, who would be writing copies of uh, one scripture or one uh, say letter, and then they are in fact sending it or taking it to the people. Now you are writing one letter. You are having say a hundred copies, and you are taking those copies to different people. Uh, those copies could be read by say, uh, say 10 people are reading uh, those copies or 50 people or 100 people. So that was in fact the area where communication with uh, quite a few people was possible of one message. We may say uh, it was a sort of a start of a mass contact. Still, I would not say it was a case of mass communication, but again, it was a step further toward uh, contacting more people, higher number of people, taking one message, copied it uh, by handwritten, uh, the way of uh, handwriting, I mean, writing with your hand, long hand, so that you are taking it to the other people. But still, there was still a struggle. And it's very difficult. It was getting very difficult to write down the copies of things. Once people were used to reading things, they wanted more. But how can you produce more? There was a problem because you have no technology available to you. You can, I mean, the technology which was available was very primitive that you are able to write with him and a paper-like substance was available. In the meantime, over the centuries, the quality of paper improved and gradually it was in the form where you can preserve it a little longer. You see, in the earlier days, uh, what you find from the book of history, that people would write on the bark of a particular tree. That bark was little sustainable. You can write on the bark of the chal jasi hoti hai kisi darakh ki, uski upar aap likh dete te, wo kaafi deir rehti thi, and it would keep you a message. But you see, again, it was not sustainable. It would uh, uh, decay over a period. So the people wanted something, some material, some substance where they could write on, and which was, uh, in fact, uh, the sort of a material which you can carry from one place to another place, not like stones or steel sheets or something like that, which you can fix somewhere. You wanted something which you can move from one place to another place and substance is sustainable. So gradually they improved and uh, it was a movement towards having a better paper. By the end of uh, something like 1000 years AD, there came a breakthrough and again it came from the Chinese. It's very interesting. Chinese people started a sort of printing. You may call it a block printing. They will make a block of something which they want to print. Those days, it was not all the words. As, as we write a letter, we all write words. In those days, it was not the words alone. You would have uh, some sort of uh, 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 line work, some sort of uh, uh, signs, some, some symbols. It also worked like a language. For instance, if you want to mention uh, animal, you want to say animal, and you do not have a word which uh, communicates what animal is. So what would you do? You would draw an animal. And that would communicate to other people that you mean animal. And this is how it was. But by around uh, 1000 or so, Chinese were able to have this breakthrough and uh, printing in the form of uh, blocks was uh, now available to people how, how they can. In the meantime, 
the people have learnt from writing letters how to compile uh, if if a number of uh, uh, papers or pages are available how to uh, put them together a very early form of book to bind them together and that will give an impression of a book book in the old days when you were having this process of communication going on very gradually very very slowly the books were not like this that you have uh, the way you have these books they were in a very different way for instance sometime you would have a scroll for instance if this is a, a paper let's suppose i mean it was like this it was also a book because you can open it like this you can see something then you can see something more then you can see something more and you will have so many things done on a long scroll as long as you can roll once it is done you can roll it like this and now it is a book in those days there were different forms we have students we have passed through very uh, different phases of our history the book we are known uh, today is uh, is where it in fact it came into this form uh, just few hundred years ago the formal printing press was there otherwise there were different forms of uh, what we can say books so from writing single pages for the purposes of sending from one place to another people were then able to have a, a sort of uh, uh, books handwritten books obviously there was no printing available so what they would do they would write with their hands again little scholarly work was available scholarly work in the sense of sciences and say in, in the politics or in the economics or in all those areas was a little work was available mainly it was the religion it was a religious work from the church and from uh, buddhist buddhist people they would write instructions of uh, their religion and in the form of uh, a book and then large number of people were employed to produce books but students you can very well imagine how many books you can produce if you have to write a book with your hand it will take years perhaps it will take years to produce a uh, hundred books if the book has got a uh, hundred pages or so it will take a long long time to write it down with uh, whatever things are available to you handwritten books still uh, in uh, in some museums in france and uh, in china people can find handwritten books so available handwritten books are available even uh, uh, to other places as well for instance when islam came islam was introduced to the uh, mankind here uh, there was no printing process available at that time so all the quranic instructions are available in the form of handwritten books hazrat ali ne apne haath se quran likha और बाकी जो सहाबा थे और बाकी के जो कई लोग थे वहाँ पे जिनको लिखने का जिनको फन आता था उन्होंने अपने हाथ से वो लिखी और इस तरह जो जो वही थी और जो होली प्रॉफिट के सेंग्स थी अदीस जिन्हें हम कहते ये सारी जी थी ये सारी हाथ से लिखी गई और हाथ से वो किताबें लिखे दूसरे इलाकों में भेजी गई उन लोगों पर जो बरह रास्त बात नहीं सुन सकते तो उन्हें फिर किताबों से भेजे गए तो है आज भी बहुत सारी जगहों पे मसाजिद में जिनके पास पुराने नवारदात मौजूद हैं डेलिक्स जिनके पास हैं आप भी देखेंगे उनके पास हैंड रिटन हाथ से लिखे हुए नुस्खे मोनोस्क्रिप्ट उनके पास जो हैं अवेलेबल एंड ऑब्वियसली दे फील वेरी प्राउड ऑफ दिस दे हैव हैंड रिटन बुक विद दैम and particularly in the in the in the area of religion it's a great great thing to have uh, something hand written by those people jinhone isko haath se likha 
तो सारी दुनिया में उस वक्त यही मरविज था और जो प्रिंटिंग तो थी कोई नहीं और ये बात जो है ये वन थाउजेंड ए डी से ज़रा पहले ही की आप जानते हैं इसको तो हैंड रिटन कॉपीज़ लिखी जाती थी वही भेजी जाती थी दूसरी जगहों पे ऑब्वियसली द नंबर ऑफ पीपल हु आर बेनिफिटेड बाय दिस हैंड रिटन बुक्स वाज लिमिटेड बट अगेन वी कैन से इट वाज ग्रेटर देन द प्रीवियस टाइम्स व्हेन इट वाज वेरी इट वाज वेरी फ्यू पीपल हु वुड बेनिफिट फ्रॉम व्हाट हैज बीन रिटन इवन फ्रॉम द कोर्ट पीपल वुड ओनली लिसन टू द कोर्ट ऑर्डर्स इन द स्ट्रीट बट एज 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 टू हैव रिटन मैटर अवेलेबल टू यू इट वॉज वेरी स्कैंड एंड इट वॉज विद द बुक्स जब किताबें आ गई हाथ से लिखने की और किताब की टेक्नोलॉजी बनी और कुछ पेपर की क्वालिटी भी जो है वो बेहतर होगी जाहिर है अभी तक जो नुस्खे हमारे पास हजरत अली के हाथ के लिखे हुए और दूसरे साहबा के हाथ के लिखे हुए जो नुस्खे हमारे पास पुरानी के अवेलेबल हैं वो ऐसे कागज पर लिखे गए हैं जो सस्टेनेबल और आज भी पंद्रह सोलह सौ साल के बाद भी अगर वो अपनी जगह कायम है तो इसका मतलब यह कि उस वक्त तक कागज की क्वालिटी ऐसी हो चुकी थी जिससे वी कैन से इट वॉज सस्टेनेबल एंड फ्राम दो टाइम्स आई टेल यू स्टूडेंट देर वॉज नो लुकिंग बैक इन कम्युनिकेशन इन द नाइन्थ सेंचुरी द चाइनीज पीपल वर एबल देन टू हैव ब्लॉग प्रिंटिंग एक बहुत मशहूर किताब है डायमंड सूत्रा चाइनीज उसमें ये बुद्धिस्ट स्क्रिप्चर के बारे में बुद्ध मजहब के बारे में एक किताब है डायमंड सूत्रा जो अभी अवेलेबल है ये सबसे शायद पुरानी किताब समझी जाती है जो नौवीं सदी के आखिरी क्वार्टर में द लास्ट क्वार्टर ऑफ द नाइनटीन सेंचुरी डायमंड सूत्रा इट वॉज अ ब्लॉग प्रिंटिंग इन चाइना चाइना में जो ब्लॉग प्रिंटिंग थी उसके इंट्रोडक्शन के बाद से हम ये देखते हैं कि डायमंड सूत्र आप अंदाजा कीजिए कितनी पुरानी किताब है लेकिन ब्लॉग प्रिंटिंग में जैसे हमने कहा कि आप उसका एक ब्लॉग बना लेते थे उसमें ज्यादातर इसमें इसमें लैंग्वेज ऐसे लफ्जों वाली लैंग्वेज नहीं है इस किताब में हम ये देखते हैं कि ज्यादा साइंस सिंबल्स और कुछ लफज और कुछ लाइने जो वो समझते थे कि इसका मफहम शे है जैसे उनकी अपनी जबान की समय थी उसके उन्होंने ब्लॉग बनाया और ब्लॉग प्रिंट करते थे उससे पहले तो जैसे अभी बट टॉकिंग पीपल वर एम्प्लॉय टू राइट डाउन बुक्स एंड इट वुड टेक है पीपल हु आर बिजी इन राइटिंग दोज बुक्स एट प्रोफेशनल लेवल चर्च वुड एम्प्लॉय द क्लरिक्स फॉर दिस पर्पज पीपल वुड राइट दोज रिलीजियस बुक्स बाद में भी ये प्रैक्टिस जारी रही जैसे हमने कहा कि इस्लाम के आने के बाद भी प्रिंटिंग टेक्नोलॉजी तो कोई इस वक्त अवेलेबल नहीं थी कुछ ऐसा नहीं था तो हैंड रिटर्न बुक्स थी यानी हम तक जो कुरान पहुँचा है अहादीस का जो नॉलेज पहुंचे मैं मजहब की बात करूं जो मजहबी चीजें हम तक पहुंची हैं इस्लाम के शुरू के दिनों से वो वही हैं स्टूडेंट्स जो हैंड रिटन वर्क के बाद महफूज हो गई और उसके बाद फिर जब दूसरे टेक्नोलॉजीज आई जैसे प्रिंटिंग आ गई तो फिर वो उसमें ढलना शुरू हो गई और वहां से आगे पहुंची हैंड रिटर्न कम्युनिकेशन जो था ये बहुत अरसा रहा इसके बारे में आम ख्याल ये है कि ये कोई एक हजार साल तकरीबन हैंड रिटर्न प्रैक्टिस रही किताब लिखने की या कोई और चीज लिखने की तो उसके बाद जब एक दफा ये जैसे हम बात करेंगे डायमंड सूत्रा जो था ये एक बुडेस्ट स्क्रिप्चर के तौर पे सामने आई ये वाली किताब किताबें तो लिखी जा रही थी हैंड रिटर्न मगर ये ब्लॉग प्रिंटिंग में इनके जो भी प्रिंटिंग था उसके ब्लॉग्स बना के उसको उन्होंने प्रिंट किया और ये किताब आज भी ये किताब जो है स्टूडेंट ये अवेलेबल है चाइनीज उसमें महफूज है आर्काइव में इनके पास ये किताब ये इस चीज का सबूत है कि यहाँ उसके बाद बहुत ज्यादा अरसा नहीं लगा वन थाउजेंड एंड फोर्टी वन से रेफर किया जाता है इस बात को जब आपको चाइना में बाई शेंग उन्होंने कुछ मूवेबल प्रिंटिंग क्या प्रोसेस जो था वो ईजाद किया जैसे ब्लॉक में तो ये था कि एक चीज फिक्स हो गई उसका ब्लॉक बन गया उन्होंने ब्लॉक को कर लिया लेकिन उन्होंने 10,041 में मिट्टी कुछ ऐसी क्ले का इट वाज क्ले बेस्ड बनाया जिससे वो चीजें जो थी वो उसका मोल्ड कर सकते थे जो भी चीज आपने बनानी है और एक दफा आपने उसको प्रिंट कर लिया पहले तो ब्लॉक में वो ब्लॉक ही रहते थे वो ब्लॉक जब वो प्रोसेस सारा खत्म हो गया ब्लॉक पड़े रहे जया हो गई जैसे भी लेकिन यहाँ पर वो जो उन्होंने मूवेबल 
प्रिंटिंग प्रोसेस को आप यूँ कह लिए इन्वेंट किया तो उसमें यह था कि क्ले को एक दफ़ा आपने प्रिंटिंग कर ली जितनी भी आपने बुक्स बनानी है दस बारह बीस तीस एक दफ़ा आपने उनको प्रिंट कर लिए तो आपने उस क्ले को फिर से रीमॉडल करने के लिए आपने उसको ख़त्म कर दिया मूवेबल होता उस उस मटेरियल को आपने सारा ख़त्म करके फिर उससे आपने नई वो चीज़ें बनाई जो आपको नई किताब में चाहिए थी वेल दिस प्रिंटिंग प्रोसेस ओके जैसे हमने कहा कि चाइना में इसका आगाज़ हुआ ये दो तीन सौ साल रहा इन द मीन टाइम यूरोप में भी इससे मिलते जुलते कुछ प्रोसेस जो थे उसका आगाज हो चुका हुआ था और इस तरह एक मूवेबल मटेरियल के साथ किताबें छापने का फिर जाहिर जब ऐसा मामला हुआ तो किताबों की तादाद थी वो भी बढ़ती गई जो नॉलेज था वो ज़्यादा लोगों तक पहुंचना शुरू हो गया अगरचे अभी तक इस स्टेज के आने तक जो किताबें थी दे बिलोंग टू रिलीजियस मैटर्स एथिक्स एंड मोरलिटी इस इस इन सब्जेक्ट्स के बारे में जो किताबें थी वही लिखी जा रही थी यही एक सब्जेक्ट था जिसके ऊपर स्कॉलर्स uh, जो थे वो बात करते थे और सोसाइटीज़ को एक किस्म की आप समझिए टीचिंग का एक एरिया जो था इंस्ट्रक्शंस का वो ज़्यादा था कुछ इसमें डिबेट का एलिमेंट कुछ इसमें नज़रियात का एलिमेंट या जो साइंसी नज़रियात का एलिमेंट हो या कुछ इकनॉमिक्स का या कुछ ऐसा जो अवेलेबल निशानियाँ हैं किताबों के हवाले से द अर्ली डेज ऑफ कम्यूनिकेशन आई विल से मैथ कम्यूनिकेशन उसमें कुछ ऐसा नहीं मिलता रिलीजस बेस्ड वो सारा था प्रोसेस ये चलता गया और आहिस्ता आहिस्ता चलता गया फिर स्टूडेंट्स वो टाइम आया वट वी कॉल अ रियल ब्रेक थ्रू इन मैथ कम्यूनिकेशन एंड देट वॉज द टाइम जब जर्मन एक जो सुनार थे जर्मन गोल्ड स्मिथ गोटेनबर्ग उन्होंने इन द फिफ्टीन सेंचुरी इन फोर्टीन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी थ्री इसके लगभग ही मेड अ मशीन प्रिंटिंग प्रेस यू सी द प्रिंटिंग प्रोसेस वॉज नाउ नोन टू द पीपल प्रिंटिंग टेक्नोलॉजी वॉज नोन टू द पीपल in the form of handwritten in the form of blogs in the form of movable material all that was now available by the time the gutenberg in fact had this breakthrough he in fact invented the printing press once this printing press students was uh, available to the people obviously the printing quality you see the printing quality from uh, the fixed block was uh, as, as we were talking some time back was very blah uh, wh- whatever you will have uh, in the printed form was very blah but when, once you have this movable material it was a little finer but when you have this printing press invented by gutenberg it was a very different printing impression of uh, whatever the language or symbol you wanted to print that was uh, how i mean this that is why it is called a breakthrough in communication and i will say in mass communication kaha ye jata hai aur this is very interesting point here ke san 350 se leke aur 1450 tak in these thousand years the number of books students number of books produced from this uh, 350 to say something like 1450 was almost the same which were produced within 50 years of this invention of printing press by gutenberg you can imagine the pace of communication and printing how it was geared up once you have this printing press technology available with you kai hazar kitabe likhi gayi hongi is dauran 1000 saal mein phir agle 50 saal mein wo kitabe likhengi aur phir jo printing press tha iske bare mein ye hai ki ye spain mein jab wahan pe muslim rule tha to printing press jo tha us waqt wahan par bhi ye available tha aur khaas taur pe jo paper hai 
یورپ میں پیپر جو ہے وہ چونکہ اجپٹ میں بھی بہت کام ہوا تھا اس میں اس میں چونکہ ایک بہت مسلم کنٹریبیوشن بھی تھی وہاں پہ پیپرس کے بارے میں تو پیپر ہے اٹ واز فرسٹ ان ویری ریفائنڈ فارم واز اویلیبل ان اسپین ان اندلسیا ویری پاپولر مسلم اسٹیٹ دیئر ان اسپین ایٹ دیٹ ٹائم سو دا پرنٹنگ پیپر واز اویلیبل دیئر اینڈ مسلم ور آلسو انوالو ان دیٹ پارٹ آف یورپ اینڈ دین ان اجپٹ Uh, where they had this printing processes known to them and uh, uh, as it was having uh, more impression uh, in a different uh, towns and cities of Europe because once it was known people uh, had started having these printing presses they were also available in other parts like the Muslim world and uh, uh, China and then the printing press was quite well known I mean it was within a hundred years it was known across the Atlantic and in America people uh, would be knowing what these uh, printing machines so to say what they are aur uske baad phir jo kitabein thi wo likhni shuru hui what happened when this printing technology was available iska ek bahut students aap ye samjhiye iska ek bahut breakthrough hai jis hawale se hum isko اس کو اسٹڈی کرتے ہیں اور ہم اس کو دیکھتے ہیں کہ اس سے کس طرح کا اس سے فرق پڑا جب یہ ایک دفعہ ہو گئی پہلی بات تو یہ ہوئی کہ جو ہے جمنی تھی جو ایک آپ یوں سمجھیے کہ ایک اپنی ڈومین تھی چرچ کی کہ صرف مذہبی کتابیں ہی لوگوں کو میسر ہوں گی اور وہی پہنچوں کیونکہ جو رائٹنگ کا کام تھا وہ ایک لحاظ سے چرچ کے پاس ہی تھا یا مذاہب کے حد تک محدود تھا اور صرف وہی کتابیں جو تھیں وہ اویلیبل ہوتی تھیں کیونکہ کتاب لکھنا بڑا مشکل کام تھا کسی اور معاملے میں آپ کتاب لکھنے کی ضرورت نہیں کر سکتے تھے کیونکہ اتنی آپ کی اسٹرینتھ نہیں تھی اتنی آپ کے پاس اتنی آپ کی اکنامک اسٹرینتھ نہیں تھی اتنی آپ ضرورت نہیں کر سکتے تھے کرنے کی کہ لوگ جو ہیں وہ مذہب کے معاملے میں بات ہوتی تھی اسی وجہ سے بہت لمبا عرصہ کہتے ہیں کہ یورپ میں جو چرچ ہے اس کی بڑی ڈومیننس رہی اور ایک آرتھوڈاکس سسٹم جو تھا وہ چرچ کا بڑا ہولڈ رہا لوگوں کی کلچرل گروتھ پہ بھی اور لائف پہ بھی لیکن پرنٹنگ پریس کے آنے کے بعد کیا ہوا جیسا عام طور پہ ایک نئی ٹیکنالوجی کے آنے کے بعد ہو جاتا ہے آج بھی یہ پروسیس اس سے کوئی بہت مختلف نہیں ہے اپنی کانسیپٹ میں جب ایک دفعہ پرنٹنگ پریس آ گیا اسٹوڈنٹس تو اس سے بہت سارے لوگوں کو یہ انکریجمنٹ ملا کہ وہ بھی لکھنے کی طرف آ سکتے اور کچھ ایسی کتابیں پرنٹ کی گئیں جس میں جس میں مذہب کے حوالے سے کوئی ذکر نہیں تھا جیسے اکنامکس کے اوپر کتابیں لکھی گئیں جیسے سائنسی آپ یوں سمجھیے کہ سائنسی نظریات کے اوپر کتابیں جو تھیں وہ لکھی گئیں اچھا جب کتابیں لکھی گئیں ان دا مین ٹائم جو ٹرانسپورٹیشن سسٹم تھا وہ بھی پچھلے جو کئی سو سالوں سے قائم تھا اس سے بہتر ہو چکا ہوا تھا تو یہ بہت پاسبل ہوا کہ آپ ایک کتاب پرنٹ کریں اور اس کے بعد وہ کتاب اگلے ملک چلی جائے اور وہاں پہ کوئی اور جو سائنٹسٹ ہیں وہ اس کو دیکھیں کوئی اور اسکالر ہیں وہ اس کتاب کو دیکھیں اور سمجھیں کہ ہاں یوں ہے تو وہ پھر ایک اپنے نظریات کے حساب سے کہ وہ کیسا سوچتے ہیں وہ لکھیں پرنٹنگ سے جیسا ہم نے کہا اٹ ایکچولی ریولیوشنائز دس کمیونیکیشن پروسیس اینڈ آئی وڈ سے دی میس کمیونیکیشن ان دا سینس Uh, now the very many people were able to to read out is like was sasta it it was very cheap as compared to the handwritten books or block printing in machine printing it was cheap so higher number of books and as uh, we were saying in only 50 years after printing process was uh, uh, invented the the number of books equaled the number of books uh, in the previous 1000 years that shows the growth rate of uh, printing printing books and that makes books available to very many people i mean the higher number if the higher number of books are available in a society obviously the higher number of people are benefiting from the ideas written in the books and once it was uh, uh, not the not the religious books uh, not the books controlled by the church but by the scholars and it is here the, the term secularism came 
uh, into existence. I mean, the, the ideas other than religion. Uh, it doesn't mean uh, anti-religion uh, ideas in the beginning. It was meant that ideas other than religion, like uh, economics, like politics, like science, like uh, all other areas of uh, human life. If you are discussing them, analyzing them, they will say, well, it's a secular talk, which means uh, other than religion. But it does not mean by any yardstick that talking against the religion. No, it was other than religion. So that was why they say it's a secular ideas. Once you have a religious books, the religious ideas, and the other side you have a secular ideas other than uh, religion. So in the secular area, in those areas, quite a few books were produced and books in at one stage students as we are talking in this area of uh, mass communication how it started from letter writing and leaflets and blog printing and all those things here when books were available almost uh, uh, 200 years almost 200 little less than 200 years it were the books which were known to the people uh, with this printing technology available. People would be knowing only books uh, printed in a printing press. And the printing presses were in the in the 200 years, uh, they were now quite advanced. Now they were using, earlier they were using different materials. But in this case, uh, they were also using uh, lead and uh, all movable materials were also used in the meantime as far as these books were concerned. And once these books were available. The governments in different parts of the world, I will say in different parts of Europe, because uh, earlier it was a breakthrough in Europe and many states who were feeling uh, the presence of books in the market and in the hands of very many people. So when the number of books grew in, um, in, in, from different aspects, there were people who started writing something which may hurt others. That was not to be tolerated any further. Because it was, it was quite likely that it would create some sort of a problem in a society. So it was there that some laws and some ethics came into existence. The laws were created by different governments that you should not be writing this, you should be writing this like this. I mean, there were different laws which would, uh, uh, in fact, uh, govern these uh, printing materials. And ethics were generally, generally uh, developed by the people who were practicing this print communication. So both uh, the rules, the laws and ethics were, uh, they, they surfaced. Uh, within, uh, say, something like 200 years, once this printing process in the middle of uh, the 15th century was made available to the people. And when these books students uh, spread uh, almost uh, all over the world in different uh, forms, what we notice that different uh, publications also came into being and different uh, things I mean also came into being like the like the concept of uh, uh, ownership or uh, authorship you see in the earlier uh, stages it was very it was not practiced that if you have produced a handwritten book you're also writing name of the person because it was a case of religious books and uh, religion did not belong to one person. So you would write a book and uh, make it uh, available to the people who can read those books. But when you have this printing process and publication of books in, uh, in a very high number, what was noticed? That the authorship was also recognized. Now if you are writing a book, if you are producing a book, if you are getting a book printed, what you would be doing? You would be writing your name on the book. Now the book actually belonged to a person who has authored it. This was uh, 
one of the concepts which came uh, with the with these uh, processes of uh, uh, printing and before uh, these times when the printing press uh, was not available and books were produced they were hardly uh, some effects on the on the on the pages like there was no page numbers and there were no table of contents there were no indices but once this printing process was available and it was very convenient very easy to do things with the availability of this technology different shapes also uh, came up on the pages in the form of uh, the numbering of the pages it was uh, quite possible to have them in an order for instance uh, in the earlier books it was uh, uh, hardly the, all the pages are in some order you would only have this common sense idea of how to keep them in order but in this case when once you have a numbering on the pages so the order of the book was defined that you will have this page 51 52 53 54 so an order and a sequence of what you are seeing was also established then you would have this indices who would tell the content of a book you would have a, a table of contents and all all those things which we are familiar with these days all they have come up to this point through this process of uh, evolution and then as we were talking about rules and ethics came the area of copyright now copyright mean that uh, if a printing press has produced something they have printed a book they have a right on all its copies i mean no other person can copy it you cannot just get a book from another Uh, printing a press and just reprinting it and uh, giving it your own name or whatever now you have they have a copyright that once a book has been produced by a particular printing press they will have a copyright and only they can produce it and without their permission you cannot print uh, their copies so uh, because i mean uh, there was quite a business involved by that time after 200 years and 300 years of these uh, printed books available there was a, a quite an altercation on uh, when the when the authorship was recognized and when all those rules were available the copyright was also established uh, this is what we are talking in the sense that when the printing process came there was a, a different landscape uh, there was so much that also changed in the concepts of communication and regulating the area of communication that all those changes in fact came with the changes in this printing process and from books students uh, you would find uh, and we will be talking in our coming sittings it was uh, when, when the books were printed and as uh, we were talking they lasted for uh, 200 years for 200 years people only knew about books jab kitabe chhapni shuru hui the gothenburg ne ye bana liya jab kitabe chhapni shuru hui to 200 saal tak takriban yahi tasavvur raha ke jo printing press hai iske zariye aap kitab chhap sakte hain aap usko kutub khana chhapa khana keh le kuch keh le pure europe mein bhi ye phail chuka tha lekin jo tasavvur tha वो किताब से आगे नहीं था और किताब का तस्वर भी जैसे हमने कहा कि शुरू में तो सिर्फ अलग अलग से बिखरे हुए और थे फिर उनको इकट्ठा करके एक बुक की शक्ल दी गई जब हाथ से लिखा जाता था सारा किताब का तस्वर उस वक्त था जब प्रिंटिंग प्रोसेस गर्टनबर्ग ने इंट्रोड्यूस करवाया उस वक्त किताब का तस्वर तो था हाथ से लिखी हुई किताबों का तो वो तस्वर जो था वो प्रिंटिंग प्रेस में चला गया और फिर दो साल तक जो प्रिंटिंग के हवाले से बात होती थी तो वो किताब के हवाले से बात होती थी कि किताब जो है वो प्रोड्यूस कर दी गई ये फ्रांस में प्रोड्यूस हो गई है ये लंदन में प्रोड्यूस हो रही है ये जर्मनी में हो रही है ये स्पेन में हो रही है ये इजिप्ट में हो रही है ये चाइना में हो रही है इट वाज़ द बुक्स जो होती थी उनके जो टॉपिक्स थे वो चेंज हो गए थे जैसे हमने पहले कहा कि पहले मजहब के मामले में किताबें जो थी वो अवेलेबल होती थी लेकिन जब प्रिंटिंग प्रोसेस शुरू हो गया और बहुत ज़्यादा किताबें छपनी शुरू हो गई तो फिर 
مذہب کے علاوہ بھی مختلف کتابیں جو تھیں وہ چھپنی شروع ہو گئی مختلف موضوعات پہ سائنس کے جیسے معاشیات کے جیسے سیاسیات کے اور مختلف جو شعبے تھے ان میں ہونے شروع ہو گئیں ان میں لاز آنے شروع ہو گئے پھر اس میں اخلاقیات کے باتیں جو تھیں وہ بھی ساری آنی شروع ہو گئیں تصور کتاب سے آگے نہیں ہوا کتاب سے آگے کا تصور کیا ہوا وی ول کنٹینیو ٹاکنگ آن دس ٹاپک in in our coming sittings and uh, we will see how this uh, area of mass communication grew from uh, printing of books once the printing process was available and what impressions this printing has brought about we will have a separate sitting on uh, how it changed the culture of uh, different uh, uh, continents or the countries uh, this printing uh, communication Uh, what impressions it brought on the daily life of the people we will have a separate sitting but it is obvious that once this printing technology was available there was quite a change all around in the sense of business in the sense of uh, exchanging views on uh, on scientific matters some of the scientists who who proved something which was uh, not liked by the church people they were punished there were there are quite a few examples available that some scientist who, who, who told something which was in contradiction to the common religious beliefs they were punished by the court or by the state. But it was all possible with the availability of printing process. Now, the books are written, not that they have to deal with the problems of the world, but they can't do that. The human life can't stop anywhere. اور خاص طور پہ کمیونیکیشن کے ایریے میں تو اس میں جو ایڈوانسمنٹ کا ریٹ ہے وہ بہت ریپڈ ہے بہت ہائی ہے ہم دیکھتے ہیں کہ اس کے بعد سے جیسا بھی آپ دیکھیں گے اس سبجیکٹ میں جو جس کا آپ پیچھے سلائڈ دیکھ رہے ہیں انٹروڈکشن ٹو میس کمیونیکیشن یہ جو بریک تھرو آ گیا پرنٹنگ کا اس کے بعد سے تو دیر از نو لکنگ بیک اس کے بعد سے نئی سے نئی جہتیں ان دا نیو اینگلز دا نیو ایسپیکٹ آف میس کمیونیکیشن آر انٹروڈیوسڈ ون آف ٹو دی ادر کوئی ایک سو سال کے بعد ہے تو کوئی پچاس سال کے بعد ہے کچھ ان ساری چیزوں کو ان ساری چیزوں کا ہم احاطہ کریں گے آنے والی سٹنگ میں ابھی تو ہم یہ دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ جب بکس جو ہیں پرنٹنگ پروسیس آنے کے بعد بننی شروع ہوئی ہینڈ ریٹن سے جب پرنٹنگ میں آنی شروع ہوئی تو کیا چینجز آئیں کس طرح کے آئیڈیاز چینج کیے گئے کس طرح جو چرچ کی ایک اتھارٹی تھی اس کو تقریباً چیلنج کیا گیا بعض جگہوں پہ کیونکہ پہلے تو چرچ کی ایک بکس اویلیبل تھی مذہبی کتابیں ہی اویلیبل تھیں ہر طرح سے اس کے بعد یہ دیکھا گیا کہ دوسری کتابیں بھی اویلیبل ہیں جس میں لوگ ذکر کرتے تھے پالیٹکس کا اور پھر اکنامکس کا یہ چیزیں جو تھیں جو جن کی جن کے مذہب کا ہولڈ تھا جیسے چرچ کا ہولڈ جیسے نارملی ہم کہتے ہیں وہ پھر تھوڑا سا کمزور ہونا شروع ہو گیا اور اس کے بعد آپ جانتے ہیں کہ کچھ چینجز ایسی آئیں کہ مذہب کا جو ہولڈ تھا وہاں پہ چرچ کا وہ پھر اتنا مضبوط بھی نہیں رہا آل پرنٹنگ پروسیس اینڈ دس پرنٹنگ کمیونیکیشن ہیز سم تھنگ ٹو ڈو with this this is this is a point we try to understand here is tarah ke sare iske baad kitab ke baad kya shakal assume ki phir mass communication mein isko hum jari rakhenge apne jo agli hamari mulaqat hogi aapke sath usme hum dekhenge ki print communication jo hai isme kis tarike se phir changes aayi aur kaun kaun si cheeze jo thi wo isme introduce karwai gayi aur kis tarah se duniya jo hai اس کے جو خیالات تھے وہ شیئر کرتے چلے گئے اور دنیا ایکچولی سمیٹتی چلی گئی اپنے خیالات کے لحاظ سے اپنے آئیڈیاز کے لحاظ سے ان ساری چیزوں کا اثر جو تھا وہ انسانی زندگی پہ کس طریقے سے پڑا زیادہ انٹیگریٹ ہونا شروع ہو گیا جو آئیڈیاز انسان کے بہت بکھرے ہوئے تھے ایک کئی سالوں سے یعنی جب سے انسان وجود میں آیا تھا اور کمیونیکیشن جیسے ہم نے کہا پچھلی پچھلے لیکچر میں کمیونیکیشن کا وجود تو شروع سے ہی تھا لیکن اس کی شکلیں مختلف انداز میں آ دیں گی لیکن جو میس کمیونیکیشن کی شکل آئی سامنے کتابوں کے چھپنے کے بعد وہ بہت مختلف تھی اس کے جو اثرات انسانی زندگی پہ آئے اسٹوڈنٹس وہ ان کا امپریشن بہت گہرا ہے اور وہ سلسلہ کہیں رکا نہیں اور رکنے کا نام بھی نہیں لے رہا آج بھی ہم دیکھ رہے ہیں کہ میس کمیونیکیشن میں اتنی زیادہ گروتھ ہے اتنی زیادہ ڈیولپمنٹ اور اتنی زاویوں سے وہ انسانی زندگی کو اثر انداز کر رہا ہے یہ صحیح ہے کہ اس نے انسانی زندگی کو بہت کلرفل کر دیا ہے بہت اس میں انجوائمنٹ کا ایلیمنٹ بھی ہے اور اس میں ایک دوسرے کی مدد کرنے کا ایلیمنٹ بھی بہت زیادہ ہے اسی لیے 
मैथ कम्यूनिकेशन को एक अलग सब्जेक्ट के तौर पर हम पढ़ते हैं ये सिलसिला हमारा जारी रहेगा और अब स्टूडेंट्स हम आते हैं हमारा जो एक आखिरी सेगमेंट होता है लेक्चर में आप उससे पूरी तरह फेमिलियर हैं कि हम जाने से पहले दो चार ऐसी टर्म्स की बात करते हैं जो इस सब्जेक्ट से रिलेटेड है और लास्ट टाइम हमने जो जिक्र किया था एल्फाबेटिकली हम इसको कर रहे थे दैट वॉज एप्सल्यूट एथिक्स आई अंडरस्टैंड यू आर नाउ क्वाइट फेमिलियर विद एप्सल्यूट एथिक्स वी वुड रिपीट इड एट सम टाइम बट टूडे वी वी टॉक अबाउट द टर्म एक्यूरेसी एक्यूरेसी इज अ टर्म वी यूज इन मैथ कम्युनिकेशन विच मीन्स दैट एनी थिंग एनी पीस ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन यू आर पासिंग ऑन यू आर वेरी क्लियर यू हैव अ वेरी क्लियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग द वे यू आर टेलिंग इट टू द पीपल यू बिलीव दैट द पीपल हु आर रिसीविंग इट वुड ऑल्सो अंडरस्टैंड दिस इन द सेम सेंस ऑफ द फीलिंग विद विच यू आर सेंडिंग दिस मैसेज ए क्रॉस एक्यूरेसी मीन्स यू आर वेरी क्लियर ऑन सेंडिंग अ मैसेज इन द सेंस दैट पीपल हु वुड रिसीव दिस मैसेज वुड हैव द सेम फीलिंग दिस इज एक्यूरेसी एंड दिस इज वेरी इसेंशियल एक्यूरेसी को बहुत ज्यादा अप्लाई किया जाता है पर्टिकुलरली इन द एरिया ऑफ इंफॉर्मेशन पर्टिकुलरली इन द एरिया ऑफ न्यूज व्यूज एंड करंट अफेयर्स एंड अनालिसिस दैट यू शुड बी वेरी एक्यूरेट यू शुड पुट द थिंग्स इन अ वेरी राइट फ्रेम ऑफ कॉन्टेक्स्ट इन अ वेरी प्रॉपर कॉन्टेक्स्ट सो दैट ऑल द पीपल हु आर टॉकिंग ऑन अ पॉइंट दे अंडरस्टैंड द सेम थिंग पर हैप्स एट द सेम लेवल एज वेल दैट इज हाउ यू वुड मेनटेन दिस एक्यूरेसी इफ देर इज अ प्रॉब्लम इन द एक्यूरेसी ऑफ द मैसेज द कम्युनिकेशन is not clear and uh, uh, you we will call it uh, a very unfair piece of uh, communication not accurate there are certain areas as as, as uh, we mentioned news you need a very high accuracy it should be very accurate and should be told to the people and particularly and we are talking in mass communication the news must be told as much in the objective form as possible so, so that people should understand uh, the accuracy of this piece of information and students we will continue talking on as we said uh, beyond these uh, books in the area of uh, mass communication but we will stay for some time in this print communication before going to uh, certain other areas till then it's khuda hafiz 